So today let's rewind the faulty coil in my vintage frequency meter and let's use a free wire for it. I have already made a video about this one and I have also made a video about where to get a wire for free. And you can see the links to those videos in the description. So now the coil in it has no winding on it because I have removed the original winding which was open circuit. I have made a very rough guesstimate of the original number of turns based on the number of layers in the winding and the number of turns in each layer and it came out as 11,000 turns for the original voltage which was 127 volts. So now the options for rewinding are those. I could rewind it to the original voltage, but this is completely useless voltage for me. Where do I get this voltage? Because my mains voltage is this. But rewinding it for such a high voltage requires a crazy number of turns and also at such a high voltage the winding can easily break down and it requires a super thin wire. So rewinding it for about 20,000 turns is probably not impossible, but it's quite hard and also it requires a very very thin wire to fit such a number of turns into it and at such a high voltage it can fail, of course. So I have decided for low voltage. I have decided for 12 volts because then I can run it using a standard safety transformer like this. Those standard ready-made transformers normally come in voltages from 6 volts to 24 volts and 12 volts is right in the middle of it. The original winding seems to have about 86 turns per volt and based on this I have calculated 1040 turns for 12 volts. So I will put 1040 turns on it and if my guesstimate wasn't right and it doesn't work right at 12 volts, I can just use another transformer with either a lower voltage or a higher voltage. Using the voltage in the middle of the range of those standard transformers allows me to adjust the voltage down or up from half of it to double of it. So let's try to fit 1040 turns into it and the hardest part is estimating the diameter of the wire. If it's too thin it can overheat but if it's too thick you can't fit it on it. So you have to kind of estimate the fill factor of the winding because there is some winding but there is also some space in between the turns. There is some copper but also some air in between. Of course the most efficient way of winding it is a hexagonal structure. You basically have one nice layer and the turns in the next layer are in between like this. So it basically is like this, like hexagonal. A bit less efficient but still nice is a square structure. You basically have those turns and the other ones on top of those. This basically happens when you have some isolation layers in between. And the least efficient is just randomly winding it. Of course if you have a low number of turns of a thick wire you can easily do this. But if it's like thousands of turns of a very thin wire you end up with this of course. The space on the spool is about 15 millimeters wide and about 6.5 millimeters tall. So if I can put the wire on it like this, which is basically in the middle of those two extremes, how many turns can I fit into it? I have 0.26 mm wire, this is including the isolation on it. Now it's 15 mm wide, so each layer can take 15 mm divided by 0.26 mm and this is about 57 turns per each layer. And here is my cat in a box. So there is 1040 turns in total and 57 turns in each layer. So how many layers? 1040 divided by 57 is about 18 layers. Okay, so there is 18 layers times the wire diameter which is 0.26. So the winding is going to be about 4.6 millimeters tall. So it's almost 4.7 mm tall, but the space on the spool is 6.5 mm, so it should fit. Of course in reality the winding is going to be much more disorganized, but there is still a lot of headroom and if it still doesn't fit, 
I can just put less turns on it and use a lower voltage. So now of course the hardest part, let's actually wind it. And of course it's always a good idea to terminate the bottom end of the winding using a thicker wire, especially if the wire is very thin, because if you just leave the very thin wire sticking out here and wind like thousands of turns on it, then the bottom end just falls off and you can shoot yourself. So let's clean the isolation from the end of the wire, using scissors of course, because this is the best tool for it. Now let's solder it, using some rosin and some solder, and that's it. I have put some heat shrink over it and let's wind it. The wire goes through the original hole and let's begin. Let's also put some sticky tape over the sharp edges of the ferrite right core so it doesn't scratch the isolation. And that's it. And now let's wind it. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 612, 13, 14, 15 and I ran out of wire so let's try to somehow join it. So it's kind of joined, let's continue. 616, 617, 618, 1035, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1040. Okay, so the spool seems to be filled a little bit more than I expected, but it still fits, so it's okay. Now let's terminate it, and that's it. So now the coil is finished, it's connected to those terminals and let's test it. Let's close it, put the screws back here and the resistance of the coil is 45 ohms, it seems ok. And now let's test it using some transformers. Let's try this one, it's about 7 volts, about almost 100 milliamps and it seems to kind of oscillate. Not that much, but it seems okay. And this transformer is about 8 volts, 116 milliamps, it draws and it seems to be oscillating a bit more. One more transformer and it's oscillating quite a lot. Now it's about 10.6 volts and this one is also oscillating a bit. And now it's about 12 volts and this one is oscillating as much as this one, which is probably not right. So is the voltage now too high? And this one is about 13 volts and it goes wrong now. So it seems like the best voltage is about from 8 to 10 volts. If the voltage is too low, it's not oscillating. And if the voltage is too high, the wrong reads are oscillating. Another advantage of a low voltage coil is that I can drive it using a simple 555 oscillator, but it's a single ended driver, so I have to use double the frequency. It seems to work nice. So this is Dive in Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon, I really appreciate your support.